It's the Andy Griffith Show, Facts and Trivia, with your host, Bob Snap. Hi right, guys, welcome to the Andy Griffith Show, Facts and Trivia. Thank you so much for being here. <clears throat> Still got that frog in the throat. Uh, wait a minute. Um, today's video is on, someone was asking about uh, doing some uh, videos on specific episodes. Well, here's one for you. Do you remember Mayberry Goes Hollywood in the first season? Here's 10 things uh, you might have missed from that. And we'll start with Barney Predicts the Future. A sheriff and deputy sweep out the jail cell. Barney tells an uh, antidote about Gordon Belfield, who visited Hollywood himself last summer. Gordon took a bus uh, tour of celebrity homes. They stopped at Gary Cooper's house, where a tourist picked up Gary Cooper's newspaper off the lawn. Uh, the maid came out, of the came out of the house and said, get off the grass. Jump forward five years. The same exact scenario happened to the Taylors. In the caller episode, the Taylors go to Hollywood. Andy, Opie, and B find themselves <clears throat> on Cesar Romero's front lawn. Opie picks up his newspaper, and Romero's maid comes out on the lawn and asks him to get off the grass. A curious headline that also ran in the Daily Planet. Speaking of newspapers, take a close look at the front page of the Mayberry Gazette. A headline in the center of the page declares 110,000 Chinese living in trees as a result of a flood. Nearly a decade earlier, that exact headline appeared on the front page of the Daily Planet in the Adventures of Superman episode Rescue. In fact, the very same headline can be spotted as far back as 1935's Doubting Thomas, a Will Rogers comedy, as well as a 1958 movie, Bride and the Beast. The Yellow River sure did flood often in that fictional Hollywood. Uh, it was the first episode with Howard McNear. However, this was not the first appearance of Floyd the Barber. <clears throat> Character had appeared in the previous episode, Stranger in Town, but was portrayed by Walter Baldwin. Mayberry Goes Hollywood, Mark McNear's debut as Floyd, but with one significant difference. Floyd had a different last name. Floyd's last name was Colby for this one episode, not Lawson. When the town gussies itself up for the Hollywood producer, Floyd's barber shop briefly becomes Colby's tonsorial parlor. Uh, the actress who played the mayor's daughter later dated Andy. Josie Lloyd played Juanita Pike, daughter of Mayor Pike. She pops up again as Josephine Pike in the beauty pageant, but this is not the only role in Mayberry for her, who in real life was the daughter of Norman Lloyd. In Barney, Men's a Broken Heart, she gets fixed up on a double date with Barney and Thelma Lou, <clears throat> though her name is now Lydia Crosswaite. Lydia turns up again in Goober and the Art of Love as the love interest for Goober Pyle. The mayor has a portrait of Verdi in his office. Speaking of Mayor Pike, the um, Mayberry municipal leader, has a curious choice of art hanging in his office. He will spot a portrait of a stately gentleman with a bushy beard. Founding father, former president, hope, it is 19th century Italian opera composer Giuseppe Verdi. Mr. Harmon later played Kojak's boss. Mr. Harmon is Hollywood big shot who comes to Mayberry to scout the small town for a film. Dan Fraser plays the character. You might know him best as Captain Frank McNeil, Kojak's superior on Kojak. He appeared in 170, 117 episodes of the 70s detective drama. <clears throat> uh, the Mayberry oak tree disappeared. Town ops to cut down a large oak tree for the film production. Well, they must have done it. The oak tree in this particular position uh, is, disappears in later episodes. It was placed there as a prop for this episode. The water trough and the Darlings are coming is roughly in the same position. Mayberry Theater changes names. In the background of uh, Mayberry Goes Hollywood, you can spot the Mayberry Theater. The place is more commonly seen as the Grand Theater in the later episodes. Last but not least, Francis Bavier actually worked with Aunt B's favorite actor. Andy ribs Aunt B for a love of Hollywood icon Rock Hudson. Old Rock kind of does it for you, don't he? Andy says, in real life, Francis Bavier works along, worked alongside Rock Hudson 
as well as Jimmy Stewart and Julie Adams in the 1952 film Bend of the River. <clears throat> so how many of those did you know? Or did you spot, I should say? Uh, I thought this was pretty neat. Um, I get a kick out of them just trying to... Uh, now you got something to look to if you, don't, if you didn't notice this before. And now you got something to look to when an uh, episode comes on. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Please don't forget about classic TV facts and trivia. Uh, which is on uh, Gunsmoke and classic rock and country music facts and trivia. Uh, a little tribute to uh, the original Leonard Skinner band. Please like this uh, video. Please give us a subscription. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And over there too, if you don't mind. Share, <laughs> share these out with your family and friends. Let them know what we're doing here. You guys have a great day. God bless. And I'm always praying for you.